So, uh, I am uh, proud to welcome back to our stage someone who is very much a North Bay Python regular at this point. Uh, in his biography, he describes himself as having gone through a transformation from uh, moody theater kid to Pythonista. And uh, he gets up on the stage at North Bay Python primarily to deal with that repressed side of him that he says no longer exists. Um, Today we're going to discover uh, what he has in store for us, talking about apparently Activity Pub, but I'm not entirely certain. Uh, please welcome Philip James. All right, comrades, it's time. The geniuses down at Central Planning decided that I should give this intro session, and so here I am. I'm Comrade Fildini. Thank you for joining me. We're going to try to go fast, but we're all in this together. It's going to be fine. Welcome to the Astronautical Tunneling Institute of the Federated Academy. I know it's your first day. There's going to be a lot to take in. It'll be fine. Today's objectives. Establish a Fediverse node make contact with a remote established node. However, as is often you know from the tenets, when in doubt, try starting at the end. So we're going to start by making that contact with a federated node. Our chosen receiver node is wandering.shop. I happen to already have an account there. It'll be fine. Now, the important thing to remember about the Fediverse is it's all just people. A server without people is just an empty box, and an empty box is a misuse of resources that should be reported to your nearest automation center. So really, we need to make contact with my account, Fildini at wandering.shop. It's going to look like this. Now, there need to be rules for navigating the Fediverse. Without rules, we're just like the capitalists. In order to understand what's happening on a Fediverse server, we start with the web finger protocol. Our tool of choice for navigating this time is going to be HTTPX. Please install it the way that is closest to your preferences. We're going to fetch this URL to figure out exactly what this server can tell us about the account Fildini at wandering.shop. Pay attention to what's going on here. There is a subpath dot well known, and then there is this protocol web finger where we're asking for a resource. That resource is the account name. There will not be a quiz. There will be notes later, but keep this in mind. We're going to import HTTPX, and we're going to get that URL, print out the JSON, and we get this. It tells us a bunch of information about the account, including a link to more details about the account. So let's talk about what just happened here. We asked the server, hey, tell us about this account that lives at this particular address, Fildini at wandering.shop, and it told us a bunch of information. So we're going to get that URL to figure out how we can actually make contact with that account. When we first try to fetch it, what we get is HTML. That HTML results in this. You've already seen this page before. Like I said, rules are what separate us from the capitalists. We need to use the underlying activity star specs. Why do I call them the activity star specs? There's a bunch of them. They all have activity in the name somewhere except for object, which is really just a subclass or a superclass of activity, depending on how you phrase it. So I'm going to start with a little bit of an example. You remember from your history classes that back in the day, there used to be this system called email before we left Earth. I think, from my, if I remember correctly, it's been a few years since the history class. It involved messengers on bicycles passing messages back and forth. And so we're going to try to use that as our replication for how ActivityPub works today. You want to send your message, represented here, to a friend's inbox. You, the message and you exist on one server. You need to get it to the bike messenger who understands email, who's going to send it to the next server. And it needs to go into your outbox first. 
which means that you need to put it in some sort of envelope. I know we don't really use paper anymore. Bear with me. Hopefully you remember this from your classes. That letter that you're trying to send is the object, and the envelope is the activity. The activity is what wraps the object so that the bike messenger, in this case, knows what to do with it to move it between server to server and also how to display it on the remote server. The protocol that gets used for moving messages around is activity pub. The object and activity set is the activity streams. If you remember one image, remember this one, it'll help you understand what's actually happening under the hood. So I lied a bit before, or at least misled you. Remember, rules are what separate us from the capitalists. We need to use the right protocol to ask for information about this account in order to understand how to connect to it. So we change our earlier request, and we say we are going to accept application slash activity plus JSON. This is a standard spec that is published by the W3, and so you can use it for talking to servers. What we get back is something that's far more reasonable. Here's a JSON blob that we can use, because we are programmers, to make a connection with the remote server. We're going to go into this more in detail. I want to make a brief aside to you new comrades. The web is steganographic. A URL is not just a URL. It hides, potentially, multiple things inside it. When you ask for text HTML, which is often the default for the web, what you get back is text HTML. Your browser renders that as an HTML page. When you ask for application slash activity plus JSON, you get back what we just saw. There is nothing preventing you writing your own servers from supporting things like application PDF or image or movie. You get to decide what gets served for different accept headers, and that gives us a lot of power that we'll talk about later. More rules. Every account is an actor. An actor makes objects, wraps them in activities, and can receive objects to send them back and forth from the server. Let's talk about what I've highlighted here, public key. Some of you may already know what this is. This is a cryptographic key uh, of a format known as RSA that gets returned with every actor on the Fediverse. Let's talk about why. The short answer is security. Let's say that there's a user who wants to post a message to the Fediverse. They say, they, this is user eb at cool.server. They say, 1312 raspberries, please. That goes out. Everything is fine. But let's say there's an attacker who wants to pretend to be EB, and what they put is, I love Paw Patrol. Now, if there weren't any way of validating that a message actually comes from the person they want it to come from, then this person could mask, this attacker could masquerade as EB and send messages to the Fediverse, pretending to be them, damaging the reputation, and potentially performing other exploits. So we sign things. We use the private key which we'll talk about in a minute, to sign things. And then the public key can be used to decrypt or to verify that message on the other end. Because EB actually has their key, everything is fine. The attacker has some random BS, and so they're not able to sign it correctly. They are unhappy. You need four things to be an actor on the Fediverse. You need a name, a server, a public key, and a private key. Your name is already your name, or you can choose a different one. We don't judge here. Uh, what you do, we already have a server. That's what we're trying to build right now. What you, we need is a public key and a private key to actually sign and validate our messages. If you remember Federated Academy Tenet 8, when in doubt, try starting at the end. We're going to start with those keys. Let's also keep in mind Federated Academy Tenet 2. This is hard. We're all in it together. Here we go. There is a library in Python called cryptography. It has some submodules that are labeled hazmat, and they're called hazmat because you should only use them if you know what you're doing. Luckily, uh, the geniuses down at Central have told us this is how to use them correctly. We are going to generate a private key, and then we are going to serialize that private key into a form we can store because we need to use it later for validating and signing our messages. If you were to run this code, you would get something like this that has been edited for brevity. You are welcome to try to look at this. It does not exist anywhere outside my scene and will never be used. If you want to try to hack me, go with God. 
We need a public key off of that private key. The format for generating one looks relatively simple, relatively similar. We are going to take that private key, create a public key off of it, and serialize to the, so that we can store it. Hooray. OK. Uh, like I said, there are four things you need to be a Fediverse person. You need a name, a server. We have the public key, and we have the private key. Now let's talk about how we're actually going to build the server. There is going to be code for this that you'll be able to use after this introductory session. It is going to be written in Flask. But one thing that we need is we need a database to store these things. The database table for starting out can be extremely simple. If you were to do a web finger request against wandering.shop with the credentials that we showed earlier, you would see a lot of things about, oh, profile picture and description and extra links. All of those are very nice. They are not required. All you need is a, user, a username, a public key, and a private key. This code, you don't have to read it. Like I said, it'll be online later. But this is the entire code for basically creating a Fediverse actor inside your Fediverse server. It doesn't require much, and that's kind of the point. All you really need is the ability to sign messages as you, and then have some places for those messages to be sent. So let's talk about sending those messages. Uh, most activity pub communications happen via post requests to other server inboxes. So if I wanted to send a message that is replying to a message, the reply, notice the in reply to here in the object, I would say I would construct a new note, notice type note, which is a standard activity pub object type. It has the actor, which is the actor we just established, federated.academy slash users slash Fildini. And it is in reply to a previous status. And I am posting this to the wandering.shop inbox. You can use one inbox for the entire server because the JSON that is being sent here says who it should be going to. It, that in reply to is important. It says who is sending it, that's the actor. And it says who it's being sent to, that's the in reply to. OK, great. Here we go. If, so we, we've established here how to send replies, which is really one of the first kind of proof of life exercises that you're going to do inside the Fediverse. Let's see if there's anything else to cover here. Uh, no, nope, we'll get to it. One thing to note that hopefully I, yep, great, we're getting there. Uh, the other thing that you might want to do is follow other members on the Fediverse. There is a type of object called a follow that you can send, and that message says, hey, I intend to follow this person. That intent is important, because there is also an accept activity on a follow object which is the server responding, we have accepted your follow request. If you have used systems that have follow requests, when you send that follow request, the server accepts the follow request, but does not send the confirmation, the accept follow, until the user has said, yes, I accept this follow. ActivityPub also supports the idea of a pending follow, which is what the remote server sends to your server to confirm, yes, we have received your follow. We are waiting on user feedback. And when that's done, we will send the full accept. In most cases, it is a two-way handshake. You send a follow. The server sends back an accept follow. So from this, we can see that what is required for a server inbox is fairly straightforward. We need to accept post requests. We need to validate signatures. And we need to apply actions. Let's talk about that validate signatures. The thing that I forgot to mention a little earlier when we were talking about the certificates is we do this so that we can construct a signature that lives in the header where we are signing the entire message. We are taking the entire body of the message, and we are running transforms against that with the private key that we established. And then on the other end, the server is validating that signature with the public key that we put in our public web finger information. 
I'll go back to really drive this in. We're using this to wrap this, and it is being validated with this, which is public information. That's why it's called a public key. OK. Great, we talked about that, we talked about that, we talked about that. OK, broadcasting to followers. ActivityPub includes inside of it the concept of audiences. There's two ways to kind of send to all of the followers that you might have on a Fediverse server. One is to say, this message is targeted at this audience, where an audience can be all the people who follow me. There's also the ability to CC any post that you make. So if I want to make a new post, uh, which I believe I am doing here with the content of punch it, I will post that to wandering.shop because my server knows that I have connections on wandering.shop and that to field is activity streams public. That is saying this is a public message. Anyone can see it. As you might imagine, there are multiple streams there because we believe in privacy here in the Federated Academy. And that CC field is particularly important. It says the people who should receive this in their, fear, in their feed is everyone who is following Fildini on Federated Academy. The server now knows and this is going to be your responsibility to code for your connection to the Fediverse, to put this message in the feed of all of the people who are registered as followers of federated.academy slash Fildini. Okay, that was a lot. Congratulations, comrades. You have successfully tunneled across the Fediverse. I want to talk briefly about why you would do all this. So first and foremost, a question I often get, isn't there already an API? There is already an API for the implementations and less so the protocol because responding to the protocol often requires standing up your own server. The most common Fediverse implementation at the moment is called Mastodon. Mastodon comes with a very robust API. You can see another talk that's linked here for how to communicate in Python directly with the Mastodon API. And that will work if you are trying to behave as though you are a client strictly on the Fediverse. However, by speaking ActivityPub directly, we can do much more interesting things. Did I hear something? Great. Uh, remember that the web is steganographic. That post inbox, that post endpoint with the inbox that you are going to code for your server does not have to reply to ActivityPub messages the same way that Mastodon replies to ActivityPub messages. It can do selective forwarding of activities and objects. It can do selective tricks with follows and returns from follows. It can do things like build lists that forward on certain messages by posting them back to inboxes based on filtering criteria that you have set at the activity pub level instead of having to have the filters set in the Mastodon tool. By speaking the underlying technology, we get to do way more interesting things. How would we learn more about this? Well, there is a great talk by Comrade Darius called Reading Activity Pub. In it, it is not an explanation of how Activity Pub works. It is a deep dive into how to read the specs that make up Activity Pub. I have linked them again. I will remind people real quick that there are four specs that really make up the activity, activity star set of protocols. There's activity pub, which is the underlying communication mechanism, the bike messenger for our email. There is activity streams, which talks about how to target things for various audiences. And then there are the activity types and the object types. An activity type is an action, and an object type is what is being actioned upon. I will refresh your memory with this graphic made by the graphic design passioners over on the aesthetics committee. This is what it is important to remember as you're thinking about how to communicate between activity pub, activity streams, your server, 
and the remote server you're punching a tunnel to. All right, we're almost done here. Bup, 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 bup. They, they make me give these presentations. I don't write the slides. OK, I think we've covered it. I'm going to leave you with a remembrance for everything we do on the Fediverse and in life in general. Feder Federated Academy, tenant number one. God damn it, you've got to be kind. Now go out and punch some tunnels. There's a shirt on the stage. Fair enough. So uh, I, I got home uh, yesterday and discovered a box labeled to Philip James sitting on my, uh, sitting on my doorstep. That's, uh, you, you can verify that's your name, correct? That is my name, yeah. Let's see what's inside it. Yep.